you know, he's kind of bigger than life in this. You know, his presence, when he walks into a room, you can see how he's taking control of everything. And that's an important quality. It's an important characteristic. You know, when you're self-assured, when you're confident, when you walk in and you, you kind of control the room, very, very important. Trust me on that. And Stallone has that quality. And like I said, some of the more successful domineering mob guys had that quality. So I see that, you know, that's realistic. That's reality. Hey everyone, welcome to another sit down with Michael Francis. Hope everybody is doing well. Everything is great on this end. And as always, we give all the praise, honor, and glory to God for that. Anyway, today I'm going to continue what everybody seems to be loving, and that's kind of my review of episode three of Tulsa King. Everybody's getting into it. Of course, Stallone, everybody loves Stallone. He's a great actor. No matter what you put him in, he does a good job. And, uh, you know, I'm starting to get into Tulsa King. Is it very realistic? Come on, people. It's entertainment. It's fun. Uh, you know, Stallone is bigger than life in these things. He's doing a great job. Everybody is. So let's talk about it. Now, I got to straighten something out. In episode two, some people were saying, you know, Michael, I don't know if this is really right what you said about Stallone possibly getting whacked. Let me take you back. Episode two, Vincent Piazza, I think, you know, he was in Jersey Boys. Anyway, great actor. He, got, he does good in these roles. He's a made guy, and Stallone hit him in episode one, knocked him out, broke his jaw in three places. So, you know, he goes to Dominic Lombardozzi, who plays the second in command, his dad is the boss, and he says, I want Stallone killed. A made guy is not allowed to hit another made guy. In reality, this would be a huge deal. Stallone could very well get killed for that, no matter what the reason is. You're not allowed to raise your hands to a made guy. But in this particular episode, you know, Dominic says, hey, a hundred grand will make this go away. And uh, is that realistic? Uh, listen, there's exceptions to every rule, but normally it doesn't happen. So anyway, uh, Stallone doesn't get killed. And we get into episode three. Obviously, he's not going to get killed. He's the star of the show. So what happens now? It's starting to open up a little bit. You're starting to see a couple of things going on. You know, I got to say something about Sly. You know, he's kind of bigger than life in this. You know, his presence, when he walks into a room, you can see how he's taking control of everything. And, you know, listen, I know guys in that life, they had the same presence. John Gotti, he had that presence. He was larger than life. My father, Sonny Francis, he walked into a room. There was, a, there was an aura around him, a charisma around him. You know, certain guys just have that. Even Joe Colombo, who was not big in stature, but there was something about him when he walked into a room, you saw that he owned it. And that's an important quality. It's an important characteristic. It's not only innate, but it's something you can develop. The way you carry yourself, you know, when you're self-assured, when you're confident, when you walk in and you, you kind of control the room, very, very important. Trust me on that. And Stallone has that quality. And like I said, some of the more successful domineering mob guys had that quality. So I see that, you know, that's realistic. That's reality. Just about everywhere he goes, he's taking control. A couple of funny parts. Now, listen, I'm not going to tell you the whole thing. It's up to you to watch it. But I'm just giving you my take on it. So the, the you know, it's starting to unfold. Now, Tyler, his driver, who happens to be African-American, he really is, you know, wants to be part of this life. He wants to be a gangster. There's a, a cool scene where they're sitting in the car, and Tyler tells him, you know, how do I rise up in the ranks? How do I be a capo? Now, you know, Stallone would normally tell him, hey, get real. You're not Italian. Your father's got to be Italian in order to be a made guy. But he doesn't say that. What he does say, I like. He tries to talk him out of it. He said, this is a dead-end street. This is not where you want to be. Go to college, get an education. Exactly what Tyler's father is telling him. Tyler's father, in episode two, is not happy about his involvement with Stallone. He doesn't want him involved in this life. And Stallone, the mob guy, tells him the same thing. Kind of brings me back to, you know, the Bronx tale. When Chaz was telling uh, the young guy there, this is not the life for you. And, uh, which is true. 
I mean, anybody in that life should not be advising other people to get involved in the life. So I like that. I like the scene. I like the way it was written. And uh, but Tyler's not convinced. He still wants to be part of it, and he's uh, he's just gung ho with everything that he's doing. And uh, another another scene comes up where Stallone is taking his driver's test, and again takes control. It's like he tells the instructor, "Get in the car." The instructor's in the car, and if you remember. In episode two, there's a guy by the name of Manny who believes that Stallone is in town to kill him. We don't know what happened. We don't know what the prior encounter was between the two of them, but something happened, and Manny's afraid that Stallone is there to kill him. They get in the car, you know, Stallone and the instructor, and he's taking his driving test, and he's doing pretty good, and then all of a sudden, the car pulls up alongside of him, and boom, fires shots into the car. Stallone doesn't get hit. I think the, uh, the instructor got hit or got hurt or whatever. Meanwhile, he's scared as can be. He's, you know, crying. He's laying down in the, sl- in the seat. And Stallone takes off after the car. And we see a chase scene. He's going after him. They crash. Manny gets out of the car. He manages to get away. Or he manages to drive away. I'm sorry. But Stallone crashes. He gets out of the car. The cops lock him up. They bring him down to the police station. And we see the... Uh, The ATF agent, the girl that he's, you know, uh, that's kind of sweet on Stallone, comes and takes him out, says, hey, he's part of a prior investigation, a bigger investigation, a federal investigation. We get him out of here. And then we see that the two have a romantic relationship. I think um, uh, Stallone takes her back to the hotel. They spend the night together, whatever. So that's developing. She's really sweet on him. Now, normally, you would not see an ATF agent or an FBI agent sleeping with a mob guy. But have I seen that in the past? Yes, I have. I also had a dear friend of mine, I'll share this with you. When I was in Terminal Island Prison, he was, had a relationship with one of the female guards. And, um, you know, we were in a, a hospital unit there. He and I were working the hospital unit. It was called B-Dorm. It was actually a psychiatric unit. And they put me and this guy in there because we were stable and they figured we can handle some of the inmates that had psychiatric problems. That's another whole story I could tell you about. But anyway, my friend and the, uh, the guard were, you know, having relationships and I would stand guard for them while they were doing that. So does this thing happen uh, every once in a while? Yeah, it does. But anyway, it happens here. And uh, so we see that relationship starting to develop. Now, Stallone, obviously, he wants to know who is trying to kill him. So there is a scene where Manny tries to set his car on fire. He wants to burn it because he don't want Stallone to know anything, obviously. But we see a scene later on where Stallone goes and and this fool that was putting his car on fire, he kept the windows uh, closed so that there was no oxygen inside and the car didn't burn. So Stallone gets there and he gets a little information about the guy Manny. We see another scene, the instructor that was in the car was in a hospital. He must have got hit or something, I think he did. And uh, Sloan goes to him and uh, he gives him 10 grand and he says, look, I'm giving you four numbers of the license plate number and he gave him the model of the car. He said, I want you to go to your friends at DMV and find out who owns this car. So anyhow, Sloan does trace the car back to Manny and I think we're gonna see what happens in episode four. But it's developing into something, you know, pretty cool. Again, understand something. They have to do different takes on these things. You know, there's been so many mob-related shows on, and there's going to be more. Let me give you a little inside information. Uh, Robert De Niro and Scorsese are teaming up again. Different director. I think Barry Levinson is directing it. Brilliant director. But they're teaming up again. De Niro is going to play Vito Genovese and Frank Costello. He's playing both characters. And it's a feature film, and I think it goes into production fairly soon. It's going to be a big project. I think it might be De Niro's last mob project, his kind of swan song, as they say. But, you know, there's been so many mob movies out there that the studios, the platforms, uh, you know, the networks, they're always looking for a different take. So the different take here was Stallone going to Tulsa, Oklahoma, to start his family and build his his uh, financial base up again. So it is a good take, and it is developing. And like I said, you got to like Stallone. He's doing a good job. Now, I've heard some comments he shouldn't be a mob guy. He's doing a good job, okay? He really is, and it's starting to develop. So in episode three, again, I'm telling you, watch the show. You're going to enjoy it. Don't look at it for reality. Look at it as a good show, and there are touches of reality in there. But uh, just enjoy it. Hey, when we watch movies and we watch television, what are we doing it for? These are not documentaries. We're not doing it for an education. We're doing it to be entertained. And it's starting to be entertaining. You know, I can say the same thing about The Sopranos. Was it all realistic? No. 
Was a mob guy ever going to, a mob boss ever going to be consistently going to a psychiatrist? No way. There's no way that would happen. He'd be in the trunk of the car by the end of the week along with the psychiatrist. I've said this many times before. Not realistic, but a great plot line, a great storyline. Mob guy confessing things to a psychiatrist. It was great. And hey, can't argue about The Sopranos. How long was it around? Ten years or something like that? Sopranos was the groundbreaking series that led the way for all the other great series. And there's so many brilliant ones out there. There really, there really are. Enjoy it. Watch it. You're going to like it. I'm excited to see episode four. I'm going to keep reviewing it because the comments will be good. People want it. And hey, I'm here to give you what you want. If you want to hear what these shows about from my perspective, you got it. That's what it's all about. I want to thank some of you jumping on a call with Mob Ties, my greatest new project that I'm so excited about. It's a legacy project for me. MobTiesFamily.com. Go on it. You'll see all about it. You're going to enjoy it. I think there's a link here you can jump on. But for those of you that have been on the calls in the past week, we really appreciate it. So. That's it for today. How do I always leave you? Same way. Be safe. I don't have to drum it into your head. I've been doing it every single time, especially you ladies. Be safe. Be healthy. People comment about my physical appearance. Hey, because I work hard. I want to be around for another 20, 30, 40 years. It's just hard work that does that, my friends. I really mean this from the bottom of my heart when I say it, especially through this holiday season. God bless every one of you. Be safe. Be healthy. God bless. Yes, I'll see you next time.